backward design, an instructional systems design model developed by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTighe. In this presentation, you will learn about the backward design model and how it can be used as an instructional model to teach students. Famous educator and author, Dr. Stephen Covey is quoted as saying, effective people plan with the end in mind. This means that you must first start with a clear understanding of your destination. The idea of knowing your destination is the very essence of the backward design model. The instructional design model that Wiggins and McTighe have created is a framework that begins with the learner's goals in mind. In order for course or unit instruction to be engaging and effective, instructors should start with the end in mind. The backward design approach consists of three steps. The first step of the model is to identify the desired results that you want from your learners. In other words, this is your destination for your students. This is the step that as the designer or instructor, you will think about what information you want your students to understand, which should not be confused what you want them to know. Results that produce student understanding will then in turn produce students that can transfer knowledge and skills into other situations. The second step of the model is to determine what you will gather from your students as acceptable evidence. It will be very important to make sure that when determining what this evidence will look like, be sure to choose evidence that will align with step one, which is your desired results. Finally, the last step in the model is to plan the learning experiences and instruction of the course or unit. Your goal in this step is to make the instruction and learning experiences engaging and effective for all students. Now let's break down each step further. Identifying desired results is the first step in the backward design model. In the first step of the design process, the learning goals for the unit or course you are planning will be established. Wiggins and McTighe point out that in this step, interesting learning should be distinguished from effective learning. We all know that we can learn many interesting things, but at the end of the day, we want the learning that will stick with our students and be meaningful. It is also suggested that we ask ourselves, how will we know if our designs are appropriate or arbitrary? Here are several questions to consider during this step in the process. Ask yourself these questions and identify the desired results. You will then be able to weed out what is unnecessary for students to learn. Instead, students will have more of a buy-in as they learn content. Students will understand why their learning is important instead of giving typical responses like, I just needed to know it for the test, or my teacher just told me I needed to know it. During this first step, it can be difficult, however, to prioritize and narrow down content to teach. In order for the content to fit within the framework of your course or unit, Wiggins and McTighe provide a useful process for establishing priorities in your curriculum. This process, which is still part of step one in the backward design approach, allows the designer to establish the curricular priorities. Many times, it, instructors are faced with too much content and not enough time to teach effectively. Here, we can see a helpful way to sort and prioritize the content that is in the course or unit. Wiggins and McTighe provide this organizer to help us focus on the big ideas or the essential learning of the unit or course. This tool is designed to help instructors think about the different levels of knowledge and understand that not every concept has the same degree or level of importance. As you can see from the illustration, the smaller circle represents the essential learning that we want to take place. This is where students will be able to transfer and apply knowledge. Please understand that each circle is important, but in order for learners to take away meaning from their learner learning, designers need to identify the enduring idea. In other words, what will the students remember years down the road? Now we are on the second step in the backward design approach, which is determining acceptable evidence. How will you know if your students have reached the desired results? In backward design, Thinking like an assessor should come before designing the actual lesson or unit. Evidence of understanding can be collected in many ways, and collection of evidence should take place over time instead of a single moment in time, which is often a test that is given at the end of instruction. Remember, think like an assessor and not an activity designer. To do this, you should ask yourself, what evidence do I need? What characteristics are being examined in student responses and products? When answering this question, that's where our rubrics, criteria, and exemplars come into mind. Most importantly, don't forget to ask yourself, does the evidence align with step one of the design model, which is identifying the learner's goals? In the third and final step of the backward design model, appropriate learning activities will be determined through the planning process. 
Many of us have heard the Chinese proverb, I hear I forget, I see I remember, I do I understand. This proverb reminds us that during step three of this model, learners should walk away with an understanding of content. The planned activities are successful when students can transfer their understanding of the content to new situations. Here are a few questions to consider when planning for instruction. During this final step, designers should ask the question, given the desired results and targeted performances, what kinds of instructional approaches, resources, and experiences are required to achieve these goals? Good planning will be both engaging and effective. When learners are engaged, they will be pulled deeper into the subject content, therefore becoming a part of the challenges and demands of the task given. We will know we are effective when the learning design has proven to help learners become more competent and productive at worthy work. Now that we know what the backward design model looks like and how we can use it when designing instruction, what are some of the things that we can expect when using this model? The first thing we can expect is that the role of the teacher will shift. Students will become the center of instruction. Teachers will find that student questions will often lead discussions and resources that may be used. Now this does not mean that the teacher is no longer teaching. There will be times when teaching content is necessary. However, other times the teacher is more of a coach and will only provide information or content when necessary. Students should be given time to figure out what to do with information and how to use it. The next thing we can expect is that change may occur within the unit or course. This change might occur with the type of evidence you gather from students, as well as the types of activities that may be incorporated into the lesson. Just be sure that the steps within the design model align with one another to achieve the desired results that you are looking for from the students. Another expectation that can occur is that since this design focuses on big ideas, students will feel more challenged. However, with those challenges, some students may become more uncomfortable. Sharing the why and the where we are headed at the beginning of the unit or course will help students become less uncomfortable. Also, sharing the idea that mistakes are part of the learning process provides students with a safe learning environment. I hope that this presentation has provided a better understanding of the backward design model. If you are looking for more information about this model, the following resources can be used.